All right, so let's do a sequence for cyclists. <laughs> so let's have a seat first and feel our breath. Just breathe for a few minutes together. Maybe rolling our shoulders. Maybe rolling the neck. Maybe letting the chin hang to the chest. Sometimes on the bike, we're like this so much with our head at an angle with the chin. Go to the chest and the head be happy. Let the shoulders hang down, the elbows. Imagine them pulling the shoulders down. Let's roll our head, our neck. Back to front, maybe front to back. Just breathing as we go. Just letting the breath go. And maybe finding some stillness. Noticing how we feel. Noticing any areas in the body that might be tense. And send a breath of awareness to that part. One more deep breath in. Exhale, sigh. Now let's do our first posture, which is our legs up the bolster. But one thing that makes this really nice is with your strap, make a nice circle or a nice loop. We're gonna put this around our thighs. So place it on your thighs. And then with the strap, tighten up the loop. So make the loop smaller, nice and tight around the thighs, because what we're going to do is bring the seat to that bolster, bring the legs up the bolster. And then with the strap, it's just going to give us a little bit of stability so we can really relax and we know that our legs are gonna roll off the bolster. If you need two bolsters, one for each leg, just place them side by side. And then cover up with a blanket. Sometimes I think it feels really good to hug a pillow into your chest. So if you have a pillow nearby, it's kind of a nice touch. You can also bring pillows at your side, bring them underneath the armpits, let the arms float, float palms up. On the bike, we have our arm in a little more of an internal, our shoulder in an internal rotation. So let's externally rotate and we do that by palms up Shoulder can come back. So imagine that chest opening up. Maybe scratch the head and massage the face. Let those legs just recover. We'll be here for about eight to 10 minutes. If you have a clean sock or a sweatshirt arm that you can throw over your eyes and kind of block that light, cover the eyes and let yourself just drop in. Drop into this shape, this posture.
Maybe letting the mouth drop open, the tongue fall into the back of the mouth. the palms relax. Maybe noticing the energy in the body, just with the breath and allowing it to still. If the mind is busy, just imagine inhaling through the soles of the feet. Exhale out the palms. Inhale in the palms. Exhale out the soles of the feet, the breath filling the entire body. Inhale in the soles. The breath fills the entire being as it leaves the palms on an exhale. In the palms, inhale, fill the arms, the chest, the head, down the torso, the legs out to the soles of the feet. Just continue with that visualization for as long as your mind needs. In and out. that low back be heavy. Let the earth rise to meet your body supporting you below. <clears throat> Always coming back to that visualization with the breath, if that's helpful.
perhaps thanking yourself for giving yourself this time. We can spend hours in the saddle. Sometimes it's a little more difficult to ha have some stillness. So just rest in the stillness. And if you find it difficult, just breathe and visualize that breath floating in through the soles of the feet, filling the entire body and out the palms, in the palms, out the soles of the feet. Into the souls, out the palms, in the palms, and out the souls of the Enjoying this recovery. Yeah, so you can take that strap off the legs, slide it off, set it to the side. And now we're next, restorative shape. Move the blocks out of the way. And then we'll bring our bolster onto the mat. And we have some options for this one. So the first thing you can do if you want, you can lay on your side like this. And then if you have a block, place it over the top of the head and then you can kind of lay your arm across. You can rest your head on the bolster and then bring your hand maybe on the other block. Or rest your head on the block, I mean. Or you can just rest your hands, your arm anywhere that's comfortable. 
this is going to open our side body. So, so much time we spend kind of scrunched up in that cockpit of the bike. As arrow as we can be. So we're going to create some space in our inner costals for that breath. That's where that block overhead is kind of nice. That can be effortless. You can cover yourself up with a blanket, which is always really nice too. So that's an option. And if that doesn't feel very good, you can also do this, where you bring your hips over to the left side, your whole body on the left side, and then you can bring the ankles and the feet over to the right side, and then the shoulders and the head over the right side. So either one of those on your side, or you can come into your banana pose. So whichever one feels best for you. You will only be here about seven minutes. So a little less than before. Just close the eyes. Visualize your VO2 max climbing to new heights as you get more oxygen in just by opening up the chest and expanding those intercostal muscles. <laughs> your lactate threshold will never be the same. Just with the breath. If that overstretched arm gets uncomfortable, then just bring it to your side. And always just go into your banana pose. And you can have that mantra, that visualization, I should say, we breathe in through the soles of the feet, out the palm. Let that breath just expand through the side body, especially in the street. You might even notice it feels good to change that angle of the arm. And we're internally rotated in the shoulder so much on the bike. It just kind of feels good to open up the shoulders. I'm thinking road bike here. <laughs> Maybe not so scrunched up on your mountain bike, but 
Just roadies. I like to hunch it in. Oh, feels so good. So just lift yourself off your bolster or kind of roll back to the middle of your mat. Let's bring our back flat to kind of neutralize that spine because when we are folded over the side, that spine is in flexion. So maybe we hug the knees into the chest on our back. Maybe extend the arms overhead side to side. So now if you're on your back, if you're in banana pose, then bring yourself over to the right side of the mat, and then bring your feet to the left corner and your arms up and overhead to the upper left corner of your mat. So you're like that crescent moon or that banana shape. Opening up the side body. So you can do that, or you're just gonna come into your bolster on the other side. So you don't have to move on your mat, you can just roll on the other side. So whichever is gonna feel best for you. Just opening that side body on the other side. Banana pose or your bolster pose. And then that arm can be anywhere that feels good. So opening up that chest, the armpit. And let's breathe into that side body.
breathing in and out. Either on your back in your banana pose or on your side, the bolster. Noticing the side of the neck, releasing. If the neck feels uncomfortable, then lift that setting of the block a little more. It might decrease the amount of spinal flexion, but we don't want to hurt the neck either. If your mind wanders, we'll be bringing the mantra on, on the breath. So we'll be inhale on. Just saying it to yourself as you exhale. Saying it to yourself as you inhale. Exhale. You notice you're holding your breath. Just begin again, breathing again. Let's lift up off the bolster. If you're on your back in banana, bring your 
legs and your arms to the middle of the mat. So everything's in the middle. And then we'll bring our back flat on the ground. Again, that spine was in flexion. So let the spine kind of neutralize. And after a couple breaths with that neutral spine, we're gonna hug the knees into the chest again and rock side to side. And maybe lift the upper back off the ground and see as you rock side to side, you get a little more of the mid back massaged. And now the next posture that we'll do is for our chest to open our chest. So let's bring our bolster kind of back to where we had it for our last shape. So the long edge is parallel with the sh short edge. And then we'll have a block for our head. So we're gonna rest our shoulder blades on the bolster. So the chest is kind of lifting and then bring the block to the head, maybe on that middle setting. So feel the chest open. And this is where you might want those other pillows on the side of the bolster to let the arms hang down those pillows. This is another one of those opening up the shoulders. And with their chest lifted, it kind of opens up the chest as well. So get that just right where it feels underneath your shoulder blades. We'll be here just a few minutes. Breathe into the chest. And notice the back pressing into the bolster when you breathe nice and deep. Let the breath go. With our lungs lifted, it helps to move that stagnant carbon dioxide in the bottom of those lungs. Especially if we breathe into the lungs nice and deep. And exhale. So maybe try that just for a couple breaths with this bolster under the chest, breathing in. Expanding those low lungs. And exhale. Breathing in. And out. Relax. So let's roll over. We're gonna find Shavasana here in just a minute or two. But after this chest opener, this little heart opener, 
Let's come into our puppy pose. If you want, you can just bring the arms out in front and stretch out that back, sinking the chest down. If you want, you can also take your blocks and just place your forearms or hands on the blocks and really melt that heart down. You might notice it between the shoulder blades. Maybe it feels good, maybe it doesn't. You just find that level of blocks that might feel nice. Maybe it's no blocks. Be for a couple of breaths. You'll be noticing the top of the shoulder, getting a little stretch here, the front of the shoulder. Anterior and lateral delt. I'm going to move my blocks, come down with my arms. One more breath. And then let's exhale, roll up, and then come onto our backs for Shavasana. So moving anything out of the way, we're bringing anything into our space. Or Shavasana. And then lie down any way that you need. Let's release into the space. Letting yourself feel completely supported by the earth, the earth rising up to meet you, being melting in gratitude. Then we can ride our bikes and practice our recovery.
our rest days are just as important as those days when you work. A restorative yoga is really important. It's really supportive. So just allow yourself to recover and renew. Even if the stillness is hard, if the stillness is a challenge, Relaxing those toes, soles of the feet, the palms of the hands. And the calves relax. And the tops of the legs rest. soft tissue around the knees. Let it heal and rest. Back so our legs rest. Glutes relax. Outer glute, upper glute, middle glute, lower glute, entire glute relaxes. Right glute, left glute, they both relax. The hips, that low back, mid back, upper back, shoulders. arms, the chest, the sides and the front of the torso.
Let's begin to wiggle our toes and move the head side to side. Sometimes I like to bring my hands behind my head and just massage that occipital area, that area where we pull our thoughts, the back of the head, where the neck and the head connect. When you're ready, you can roll to one side. Maybe pause to the side. When you're ready, you can press up to a seated position. There's no rush to move at all. You don't have to move. Yeah, on the Let's bring your hands to our heart center. Let's exhale. Inhale. Om Shanti. 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 Keep the rubber side down. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>